Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Please turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. My name is Nathan Grisham. I'm the youth minister with Dogwood Grove Baptist Church. We thank you for taking the time to join um, these Bible studies. Uh, if you like this Bible study, uh, please look down um, on YouTube where you're watching it. And we have other videos that are there as well. But our prayer and our desire is that you go closer to the Lord um, while joining these Bible studies with us. These are designed for, uh, even though I'm the youth minister, these are designed for teenagers, adults, uh, grandparents, it doesn't matter. Uh, we feel like that these will help you in your Christian walk. That's why we do them, and, and we thoroughly enjoy it. So thank you for joining us. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16 says, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Let us pray. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for the chance to come together again in this Bible study. God, we thank you for your word and your scripture. Uh, God, that guides us and leads us. And God, may we use your scripture. May, may we um, follow your scripture. God, may we place your scripture in our heart and use it each and every day. And let the Holy Spirit guide us and lead us. Bless each and every person watching this Bible study today. <clears throat> and God, I pray you help them in whatever areas in their life that they're struggling with and they need help with. And we thank you for them listening. In your name I pray. Amen. There in Exodus chapter 20, it talks about not bearing false witness on your neighbor. What it's talking about is a lie. Um, in, in, in our society right now, uh, I feel like that there's a decline in honesty. I just feel like in our nation, in the United States, honesty has gone downhill. And uh, <clears throat> we know more facts, well, but we believe less than we ever have. And um, and all of a sudden, we have to choose um, when, when we're sitting looking at truth and consequences and we must consider that that there's consequences when we don't tell the truth. Uh, so I want to look at three things as far as a, a false witness and what that does and what we need to do. The first thing that we got to remember is there's liability in our false witness. When we bear false witness on somebody else, um, the it's the most damaging and foolish thing that we can do uh, because it hurts people, but also... Um, it brings the ire of God. God doesn't like it. He doesn't appreciate it. If you read over and over in the Old Testament, he covers this. He applies this. He does not want us to do that. Satan was the father of false lies and false witness. And, and there's no truth in him. And, and when you and I decide to go down that same path, uh, we cause destruction the same way Satan does. The Bible talks about he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when we bear false witness and we lie on other people, um, this can be the consequence as well, that we steal, kill, and destroy, and we cause harm on other people. Um, so uh, it's important for us in the, what we do and the way we carry ourselves that there's honesty and there's integrity. Um, uh, also, when we bear false witness, then then we're slandering them. We're, we're falsely criticizing them. Uh, when we remain silent, when we ought to speak up in a situation where we know what's being said is not true, if we don't speak up and say something, then we're going right along with that person and that false witness. Um, when we bear false witness, when we lie on someone else, let's just get down to the bare facts of the matter. When we lie on someone else, uh, we are breaking God's commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness is one of the Ten Commandments. It says, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Um, and here's the deal. We receive judgment from God when when we fair, bear false witness. A um, important thing uh, for us to remember is that when we're, when we're listening to someone tell something, did that person hear what they're telling you from someone else? Or did that person witness it firsthand? If you witness something, then you know it actually happened. If you're a second hand, third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand, hundredth hand, you don't know if it actually happened. You're relying on other people who could bear false witness. So when someone is telling you something, when someone is telling you a story, I believe it's very important for you to ask the question, were you there? Did you witness this event? Event? Were you part of this? If the answer is no, the follow-up question is, who did you hear this from? Who? And if they start stumbling around, just walk away. Don't be involved in false witness. The second thing is remember the reliability of a faithful 
witness. Uh, Jesus was called the faithful witness of God. That's Revelations chapter one and verse five. When we tell the truth, we are like him. Acts one and verse eight says, but you shall receive power in the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is coming upon you and you shall bear witness of me. The opposite of bearing false witness on someone else is to bury a, is, is to, we shall be a witness to Jesus. Okay. It's very important that bearing a false witness is the totally opposite of what Jesus did and what Jesus caused us to do, called on us to do as a witness of Christ. We're called to testify on what Jesus has done for us and to tell the truth of how he has saved us. And if we lie about other people and lie about other things, okay, if we do that, then it hurts our witness when we're telling other people about what God is doing in our life and they don't believe us because we have lied about other situations, okay? When we lie, it ruins everything. It ruins our Christian witness. It ruins <clears throat> it ruins our witness with that person and with that friend. It destroys everything. Um, many years ago, I had a youth worker who who was uh, involved in in teaching students, and and the youth worker lied about a student, and and the student uh, was held highly accountable for what happened. They were punished by their parents. They were disciplined. Their their reputation was hurt because other students knew uh, of this of this lie and believed this lie because the person who told it, those students viewed it, it was persons as someone of integrity. And then the adult came back years later and said, "Hey, I lied in this situation," and went to the student and apologized that they lied about that and said that they asked God for forgiveness. Okay, now. What do you think happened with that student? Did they forgive that person? Sure they did. They were older and they were adult. But here's the deal. The damage is done. That false witness hurt that student and hurt their witness. And even though they forgive them and move on, they're not going to believe them from there on out. And there's going to be no relationship because of what happened. False witness damages relationships. Okay. And when it damages relationships, oftentimes they cannot be repaired on a spiritual situation because that person is not going to look <clears throat> at the the person bearing fault was false witness. They're not going to view them anymore as someone of integrity, and they're not going to listen to them in spiritual situations. Okay, and so it's really important for us to stop, take a second, and tell the truth, and not bear false witness. Okay, uh, a false witness. One teenager bearing false witness against another can totally damage and ruin a teenager's life when it comes to school and high school. And it could be something that cannot be repaired until they get out of school and move on to college and in their professional livelihood and get away from that situation. It's damaging. It's brutal. And as Christian students, we have to be you have to be careful that what you say and what you do is filled full of integrity and that honors and glorifies God. Okay. So we have to be careful on what we repeat. When we repeat something, make sure number one, that we know that it's true. Okay. That it's not false and that there's integrity behind the person that's telling us what they're telling us. Okay. In repeating that. But here's the second thing. If what you're repeating doesn't lift that person up and is tearing that person down, let it go and don't do it. it if there's one minuscule, one percent that what you're saying could be wrong, stretched, uh, fabricated, exaggerated, whatever. Let it go. Tell things, say things that honor and glorify that other person, that honor and glorify God, and help that other person in their Christian witness uh, to be a better person, to be a better Christian, and to be viewed that way. Also, remember the spons- responsibility of your family witness. This goes for grandparents. Uh, parents, students, children, uh, remember the fonts responsibility of our family witness. Adrian Rogers says there is a crying need in America today for families, for families to know, believe, love, teach, speak, and share the truth. A home that is not built on truth will crumble. And this is very, very true. So how do we how do we translate this importance? 
of not bearing a false witness. Um, how do we how do we pass this down to another generation? I'm gonna talk to the parents just for a second here. Parents, you got to teach your children scripture so they know and understand the commandments of the Bible. Parents, you need to sit down with your children and you need to talk about this lesson about not bearing false witness, about being honest. Little children and sadly adults as well, but we'll talk about little children. Little children. Um, immediately they'll have a tendency to lie. They'll tell a lie. They'll exaggerate. Uh, I'm just trying to be funny as an excuse they'll use. Um, but they'll lie and you have to quickly, immediately hold them accountable for that lie and make sure that, that what they're saying is true. And you teach them this verse and you tell them that's not what we do. Okay. Because if you do that, number one, you're going to get in trouble or number two, somebody else is going to get in trouble. But most importantly, you are disobeying God. You're not honoring God. It's important, it's important that we teach children that. Um, students, and, and we have to learn the scriptures. Uh, students, you need to learn the scriptures and place them in your heart um, so that God can guide you and lead you. This is a great verse on not bearing false witness for you to memorize, for you to place in your heart. And then the Holy Spirit can take this verse because that's what the Holy Spirit does. It takes verses that we've learned and memorized and pulls them out and speaks to us through those verses uh, to help us. So students, it's very important that you memorize and learn these verses. Grandparents, okay? I want to talk to grandparents just for a second here this morning. If you're a grandparent and you lie, then I'll guarantee you, you're going to have children that lie and you're going to have grandchildren that lie because your children are watching you and then your grandchildren are watching you and they're watching their parents. And if you set up a generational, uh, I'll call it a generational curse of lying and not being honest and not telling the truth, you're just passing it down and passing it down. And, it, and it's going to be it's going to become more and more of a problem. And you, your family, your family name, whatever your last name is, you don't want it to be known um, as something as a group of people who are dishonest, who bear, false, who bear false witness and don't tell the truth. So grandparents, it's really important um, that we set that bar high. Also, grandparents, it's important because your grandchildren look up to you. Uh, I've said this before on these Bible studies. Um my four grandparents, I looked up to them. I thought everything they did was great and wonderful. They made no mistakes. I viewed them as, as two supermen and two superwomen, and, uh, and I did what they did. And so uh, it was very important that they gave me that example of honesty, and integrity, and we need to do that as well. Grandparents, you need to be aware of that. You need to be mindful of that uh, and know the impact that you have on your grandchildren, okay? Um, Mom and dad's telling the truth and keeping our word uh, when we're put in situations that's called integrity. And it's very important that our children see integrity in our home. Students in your home with your parent with your parents, it's very important that your student your parents see integrity, that they see honesty there at home. A house, a home, a family needs to be built on honesty and integrity. Okay. And that when I say honest, I'm talking about 100% full honesty is just saying, hey, look, I made a mistake here. OK, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I apologize. Be honest when you make a mistake. Be honest about it. Don't dodge it. Don't run around it. Be honest about it. OK, integrity. OK, They're, the worst place for there to be a false witness is at home between two siblings and, and talking to uh, teenagers. Um, don't bear false witness against your brother or your sister. Be honest. OK, um, have integrity um, when you say something, make sure it means something. OK, and, and I'll go as far as to say this right here uh, with your siblings. OK, instead of running to your mom and dad and instead of trashing them and trying to get them in trouble. How about the older brother sit down with the younger brother or the older sit down, older sister sit down with the younger sister or the older brother sit down with the younger sister and sit down and say, hey, listen, what you did right there. You don't need to do that. OK, you don't need to do that. The Bible says not to do that. Don't do that. And also, when you do that, you're going to get in trouble. And I don't want you to get in trouble. OK, be honest. How about that? How about a, a sibling relationship where you're trying to look out for the other one and teach them biblical principles? Because I'll tell you this, a younger sibling looks up to their older sibling. So how about we practice that as well? and not bear false witness against our siblings. Um, and parents, <clears throat> here's the deal. Parents cannot tolerate disobedience in the form of, of a false witness. Uh, defiant 
disrespect, defiant dishonesty, it cannot be allowed to go unchecked and it's got to go punished. OK, it has to be punished. OK, so that so that we can stop it. OK, and and students, here's what I tell you is that as you go in the Lord, this should decrease and decrease and decrease as far as how often your parents have to punish you and get on to you and discipline you for things. Because as you're growing in the Lord, um, this 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 should decline. So students, I ask you, uh, where are you at as far as your actions and as far as how much uh, you're being punished by your parents uh, for dishonesty? OK, um, and where you at? How often are you being punished? How often are you being grounded? How often are you disciplined? <clears throat> and so that should go down as you get older. That should go down. OK, and and I hope and pray students, if you're, you're watching this and you're in seventh grade or you're in 12th grade or wherever you're at or you're in fifth grade or wherever you're at. Is it that's starting to decline? It's not going up. It's starting to go down. Many times what I see in students is that you get a job and you get you get a car and you get responsibilities and all of a sudden what should be is that those responsibilities grow and give you opportunities to show integrity. Many times that causes things to go down and all of a sudden discipline starts to happen more um, because when you get this freedom um, that, that your actions and, and your, your integrity starts to go down because you're doing things you're not supposed to be doing. Okay. And, and my view 100% is that when this happens, if, if you, the student, would have gone back and placed God's scripture in your heart and you would have been reading your Bible and praying and relying on God's scripture, then, then your walk would have been easier. Many times, students and adults, is that we don't rely on God's word and we try to do it ourselves, And then we step out and we try to do all these things and we crash and we burn and we fall because we're not relying on God's word. I believe if you're not reading the scriptures, I believe that if you're not serving God and you're not going to church, you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing, it highly increases the opportunity for false witness. OK, you need to be in God's word, studying God's word, <clears throat> and you need to understand the importance of your witness and the integrity of your word, because your word can build people up. Your word can tear people down. But more importantly, your word can build up Jesus to when others hear what you have to say about Jesus or your word and what you say and your integrity can tear him down as far as the way other people view it. And that's very, very important. So my prayer for you today is that, that you desire to be a person of integrity and honesty and you desire to say things that lift people up not tear people down. Make sure you know what you're repeating. Make sure you know the, the source of what you're saying. But I truly believe if you decide to be positive and not be negative, if you decide to build people up and not tear them down, <clears throat> it'll be much easier not to bear false witness. OK, because so many times when we're bearing false witness, we're doing destruction and we're tearing people apart. If you're listening today and you have a problem in this area that you have a problem with bearing false witness, you have a problem with lying about other people. Um, when this video is over, close your eyes, pray, talk to God, ask God for forgiveness. Tell him you're wrong and tell him you want to do better. And you want to start today to change your life in the positive direction. <clears throat> and bearing a good witness for him. Because in the end, the most part, the most important part about this lesson is the things that we do and the things that we say bear witness to Jesus. And we do not want to bear a false witness for Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I love you. God, I thank you for the opportunity to do this Bible study. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for the Ten Commandments that you set in place. And God, I pray that we just don't flippantly go through these Ten Commandments, God, that, that we look at them like we did today. And God, I pray that we don't bear false witness. God, I pray that what we say is true and that we're people of integrity and that we're people that people can trust. And God, I pray that our witness is true and our witness for you is true. Bless each and every person uh, watching today. <clears throat> Lord, you know what's going on in their life. You know what's going on. You know where they're at. And Lord, I pray you bless them and give them the strength to face each and every situation in this day. In your name I pray. Amen.